In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at my new video light, which is the Colbor CL60. And before I start, I want to just say a massive thank you to Colbor for sending this over to review. And just because I like to be fully clear with these things, Colbor have sent me this free of charge to take a look at, but they've not told me anything to say, and they've not paid me or anything for actually doing this review. So I'll be giving my honest opinion on it. But yeah, for a couple of years now, I've used a couple of LED panels to light my videos. And they're pretty good, and they're much better than the old soft boxes I used to use. But the one downside I've found is that the ha shadows are very harsh, so if you have a shadow on the table, obviously there's two lights that kind of balances it out, but if I turn one of them down, for example, you'll see they cast a very harsh shadow with very tight lines on them. And in certain scenes, that can be a little bit tricky to work with, because you end up with these massive shadows on walls or on tables, and it's, it's just not ideal. Before that, I used soft boxes. So essentially what that was was a massive sort of soft box type enclosure with four CFL bulbs at the back. And that worked really well to provide a really nice soft light without any harsh shadows. But the downside of those ones in particular is that they had massive CFL bulbs in them that tended to die or break, so they were very unreliable. And because it was compact fluorescent, the colour rendering just wasn't there, it was, the colours were always a bit rubbish. So I didn't really like using those either, so actually moving to the LED panels made stuff a lot more convenient. Because with the old soft boxes, they were such a pain to work with, I found myself just not using the lights and just using the room lights. So getting these LED panels definitely made me more likely to actually properly light the videos. But with the much harsher light from these, I've been kind of looking into trying to get some sort of softbox type setup again. But one that's maybe a bit more convenient than the old compact fluorescent one. I was looking at just getting sort of softbox attachments from existing LED panels, which would have worked, but they're not super bright. So when Colbor offered to send this over, I thought this would actually be a great option to take a look at. So what this is, is what's called a Cobb video light. So whereas an LED panel has a lot of different LEDs in it, all this has is a single super bright LED cob at the front. And what you can then do with that is attach that to different types of soft boxes, umbrellas, things like that, to manipulate the light how you want it. So if you want a nice soft light like I have, you can put it into a soft box, you can put an umbrella in front of it, you can reflect it off a reflector, you can just reflect it off the ceiling, or you could just use it as like a really bright point light if you wanted. It's very flexible because literally all this is is a super bright light, light source. What's also quite cool with this one is it's configurable colour temperature. So like my existing um, LED panels, I can adjust the colour temperature of them, which is something I have found super useful. Because right now, for example, I'm filming under my office lights, like the lights in the ceiling, which are about 4700 Kelvin. So I can match those with studio lights. If I'm then filming in the living room, which has warmer lights, or filming outside, for example, which has, well, really cold lights, it's sunlight, I can adjust the lights I'm filming with to match the colour temperature of other lights in the room. So whatever solution I went to from these LED panels, I needed something configurable colour temperature. So it's really good that it has that. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at the box, take it out, see what it comes with. We'll then try and just power it on for the first time just to check it all works. And then I'll go away for a while, use it all off camera, learn how it all works. I'll, I'll hopefully try and film at least part of a video with it just so I've got the experience before I then come back and talk about how I found it. Just because I want to actually you know, get hands on with it before I just start talking about how I found the performance of it. And then obviously, if you're interested in buying this, there'll be links in the description. So, let's get into it. So here we have the box. On the front you see a picture of the light. On the side there's some specs about it, where it says a 65 watt cob light. When you say wattage in respect to this, it's a bit of a weird one, because yes, it's a 65 watt LED, but that doesn't really relate to the lumens output, so I'll get the actual proper lumens output in a minute. Power cube design, don't know what that is. Matrix control, quiet operation, beautiful colour fidelity. Ultra compact, that's not particularly useful. On the back there's probably more useful specs, so we can see it's 97 plus CRI, which is a colour rendering index. And that's basically how accurately colours under a light will be reproduced. So with an incandescent bulb or halogen, the colour color rendering index is 100. I think the same with sunlight, you know, they're perfect CRI. Colours will be reproduced perfectly under them. Whereas things like fluorescent lights, on the other hand, have relatively low CRI, so maybe about 80. And that's why if you're in a room that's got fluorescent lights, maybe colours don't look quite as accurate or they all look a little bit greenish or a little bit unsaturated, stuff like that, because it's not got as good CRI. Then with LEDs, they can kind of be anything from 80 upwards, because it really depends on the quality of the LED and the way the sort of LEDs are set up. So having a CRI of 97 plus is actually really, really good for an LED light source, so that's actually really good, so the colours should be really good under this. Temperature-wise, it can go 2700 Kelvin, 6500 Kelvin, so that's basically the full range you would need to match from anywhere from incandescent all the way up to sunlight, so that's really good. 120 degree beam angle, 
or if you use the reflector on it, because there's a little reflector that comes with that, drops it down to 10 degree beam angle. And this is where it's more important to talk about the brightness rather than trying to use that watts value. So we can see that without the reflector, at one meter, set to 5600 Kelvin, it outputs 2600 lux. So that's what you'd use if you're comparing it to other lights, but that is pretty bright. Obviously, if you change the brightness level, it'll adjust how bright that is, obviously. And quite often with these, as you change the colour temperature, it also varies how bright it is because you're mixing warm white and cool white LEDs. But we'll see how much that affects it on this because when the LED panels, changing to any sort of warmer or cooler colour temperature really drops the brightness. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with these. 80 watt maximum power input, I presume that's just because there's power overhead on top of the LED for things like the cooling and stuff. 20 volt, 4 amp. And interestingly, this is powered over USB-C PD. So that's an interesting one because basically every video light I've used before just uses a standard power brick, whereas this uses USB-C. Now, on the one hand, that sounds really convenient in the sense I could use my laptop charger if I, for if I forgot the power supply for this, or I could power it off a big power bank. It would have to be quite a big power bank, but you could power it off a power bank. The downside to me seems like you couldn't then just power this from like a standard DC power supply. You can't just plug a basic barrel jack into it. So that might make it a little bit less flexible, but as long as you've got a USB-C power delivery source that can deliver 4 amps, 20 volts, then you're fine. Aluminium case, all the weight, that's a little bit boring. So yep, that's all there. And around the side here, it says it works with Callbar Studio. So this is their sort of app. So it'll be interesting to try that out because personally, I don't really use app control on studio lights, but it can be useful if you say you've got a group of lights that you want to control together, or say you're mounting your lights, say high up on a ceiling or just in a place that you can't easily get to, the app control can be quite good. But for different brands of studio lights, sometimes the apps are really good, sometimes they're not very good. So it'll be interesting to see what this app's like. So inside the box, we then get this carrying case. Wasn't expecting that, that seems quite nice. And we'll see what we get in here. So if we open that up, see what accessories it comes with. Let's see what we have. So we have the light itself. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Not too big, actually, that's quite nice. We get a little manual for it. The reflector, so this is what goes on the front, so you don't have to use a reflector. This basically will narrow the beam angle, so as I said in the specs, it has 120 degree beam angle, so it basically will shoot out at a really wide angle. This narrows that down, so you basically you can put that on the front if you want to narrow the angle. And we'll try this out, but I'll be using this with a softbox. You then get this, which is a Bowen's mount adapter, or Bowen's mount, I think Bowen. Basically, this is a standardised form factor from attaching softboxes and different attachments to lights, umbrellas, stuff like that. So what they do is they provide this adapter ring that should, in theory, clip onto this light and let you fit standardised softboxes onto it. So you don't need to buy like a proprietary softbox for this type of light. You can actually buy standard softboxes from all different brands. That's really good. Then finally down the back here, you get a power supply, which actually has a UK plug. That's good. I was a bit concerned it would come with some sort of foreign plug, but actually, nope, it comes with a UK plug and a big, long power cable. And obviously, on the end, you've got your... USB Type-C connector. But the one downside I'm seeing with this is that the power adapter is kind of like a brick with a plug built in, so that goes straight into the wall. To be honest, I'd have rather had one that had a sort of brick in the middle of the cable. So if I bring up, for example, the brick that powers my current studio lights, it's this. So that goes off the light, that goes down to the mains, and you've got this brick in the middle. Now, the benefit of this type is that you can swap this mains cable out for a longer one. So here, for example, these came with quite short cables. I've fitted longer IEC cables onto these so I can run them further without extension leads. With this, you can't really do that, so you'd have to use an extension lead of some sort, which isn't ideal. It's not the end of the world, and obviously you can replace this with a different power adapter if you wanted to, and you could just put an extension lead on this, and it is quite long. But yeah, I'd have rather seen a replaceable cable on this, but it seems okay other than that. And yeah, that's just a standard 90 watt USB-C power adapter. I mean, it even says like replacement AC adapter, so it's literally one of those just standard laptop power supplies. So yeah, that's all that is there. And then finally, the last thing we get in here is a sort of attachment to fit it onto a light stand. So we'll take a look at this and then we'll take a look at the light itself and we'll put it all together. But what we get in here is just strip the packaging. This, which is the fitting to fit it onto a light stand. So that will attach onto the light, presumably there. And then that will go into a standard light stand and provide some level of angle adjustment. So that's pretty good. It's all metal as well, so that feels decent quality. Although one thing I did notice is this bounce mount is plastic. It's probably fine. I'd have rather if this was some sort of metal or maybe felt a little bit stronger, but it doesn't feel terrible, so that's okay. But yeah, the actual mount that's holding the weight of everything is metal, so that's good. 
So finally what we'll take a look at is the light itself and then we'll try and power it up. So if we take this out and that's it there. It's got a plastic protective thing on the front as well so we'll take that off and then there's a plastic film there so we'll take that off and this is what you get. So essentially this is all it is. You've just got the cob on the front so that's the LED. As it's, you see it's a very big LED but that's it there. Loads of heat sinking, there's active fans in here so we'll see how loud they are but I think they do vary based on temperature so that shouldn't be too bad. Loads of ventilation. Fixing on the bottom to put the put it on the stand. Presume the bound mount will clip into those little dimples there. And then on the back you can see we've got the controls. So there's a, there's a screen here, there's buttons to set the colour temperature, the brightness. Presumably there's other settings as well, I think you can set the fan mode, stuff like that. And then there's these two sort of little... They're not wheels, they're like... They're like... They go up and down and they click in but they don't rotate. They sort of like flick, they're like flick switch type things. So yeah, these two controls there, so we'll... See how all these work, but I'll need to really go off camera and learn how all that sort of stuff works. But yeah, that's the light there. And in theory, we can probably just fit this onto the bottom, so I presume this will just in some way attach on. I'm not going to try and guess it without actually reading the manual, but that should attach onto the bottom, like you put on the light stand. And then the bounce mount would attach onto your softbox through those pieces at the front. And then presumably, we'll just clip over the light. Yep. Like that. So that pushes onto the light there. Same with the other side. There you go. Yeah, and that's on there, so now that would fit onto Bounds Mount softbox. And to be honest, when I saw this, it was ball bearings, I was a little bit like, oh, it's not going to be strong. That's actually really strong, so that's not going to fall off, so that seems quite good. So that's it there. So what I'll quickly do is we'll go and power it up, just check it all works, then I'll go away and learn it all. Okay, so I've plugged the power adapter into the mains, and to be honest, the cable is actually long enough, at least for me using it here, so it's not the end of the world, but it's still, we'd rather it's replaceable. But if we plug that in there, Cool, there's a little bit of fan noise when that turned on. It's it's not turned on yet, I think it just like initialised and then the fan just sort of ramped up a little bit. So in theory, if we turn this on at the back... Oh, there we go. Here's just took a wee minute. And that's it on there. And if you're wondering how bright that is, well, you can probably see that the <laughs> camera's kind of blown out this fact you can't really see the screen on the back because it's so bright. That is very bright. So if I hold that even back off here, also my studio lights are on, but that's quite bright. And this camera is also currently set to auto exposure, so it'd be even, you know, it'd probably be even worse if the camera wasn't adjusting the exposure. So, yeah. I suppose for a comparison, obviously I do have studio lights on right now, but if I bring that in there, and then I take it out, and bring it in again, you can kind of see the difference. And in fact, if I bring it out, turn off the existing studio lights, and then bring it in, you can see that this on its own is quite a lot brighter than the current studio lights. So, yeah, it's definitely working. Bring the studio lights on again as well. And as you can see, actually bringing them on makes very little difference to the overall shot because the amount of light that's coming out of this, like this is actually painful. I'm not even going to look at that because it's painfully bright to look at. So that's there. In fact, my camera is actually flashing up telling me to put the neutral density filters on, which I've never seen it flash that up for under studio lights anyway. I've only seen that pointing at the sun or whatever. So yeah, that's definitely pretty bright. <laughs> so yeah, that's it there. So what I need to do is go away off camera, get the softbox set up, try it on that, just learn how it all works. But as you can see, we've got the controls in the back, so you see the dim, which is the brightness is set to 100%, CCT is 4700 Kelvin. Yep, that turns changes the CCT, so you can see that's now much warmer light. Put it up. That'll go all the way up to much cooler light. Yep, there we go. That's very cool light. So yeah, seems pretty good. So what I need to do is I need to learn how all this works. So I'm going to turn it off. And then I'll go away off camera and learn how this works. I'll also learn how to turn it off because I hold it down. Cool. There we go. Yeah, that, that is quite bright. I've not seen my camera flash up that warning before for when I'm using studio lights. So yeah, that's quite impressive. And we're back. So I've now been away, played with the light quite a bit, filmed a video with it, and now I can sort of show it off a little bit, demonstrate it, and give my impressions. So yeah, if you've seen my boiler install video, that was primarily filmed using this light. I basically used this light, the room lights, and then just used one LED panel off the side just to fill in a few shadows. So almost all the light from that was filmed with this light using a softbox. And we'll take a look at the softbox later. But I've kind of sort of figured out how it all works so I can talk about it. And it's got quite a lot of thing, little things and little neat features that I quite like. So if you turn it on, it comes on, it's super bright. Now, obviously it's very hard to film lights um, because the camera just goes mental and you'll never quite get a good impression of what the light actually looks like on the camera, especially when it's auto-adjusting like this. I'll turn the brightness down just so it doesn't totally blow out so you can see the screen. 
but I'll sort of just talk about it and really demonstrate the features. If you want someone who can demonstrate the best way to use a light artistically, I'm not the person for that. My technique is basically point light at thing, make thing brighter. But I can sort of talk about the features of it, which is, you know, the sort of stuff I know. So the difference controls is quite good. You've got these two little flicky buttons I saw before. So top one does brightness, bottom one does colour temperature. And if you hold them down, they'll go up in tens quite quickly, which is quite good. If you flick them, they go up in ones. That's really nice. My previous LED panels think only go up in tens, and it's sometimes you can't quite get the brightness you want. So being able to go up in one percent is actually quite nice. Additionally, if you click them in, they sort of jump up, so in sort of to preset stages. So you can quite quickly jump to certain stages if you need that, which is nice. Additionally, the same one for the color temperature, same thing. Hold that down, goes all the way to. 6500 Kelvin, hold it the other way, it'll go all the way down to 2700 Kelvin. Don't know why we're waiting to watch it do that, but it'll do that. It'll also go up in 50 Kelvin increments, which is really nice and granular, which is good. And if you click that in, it'll jump through a few sort of common brightness or colour temperatures, which is nice as well. And the other thing I've realised going to looking at this is obviously it goes up to 6500 Kelvin. That's actually really good. That's better than my old lights, because my old lights could only go to about 5500 Kelvin, something like that. Let's quickly check. They go up to 5600 Kelvin, which is fine, but and that's fine for daylight. But 6500 Kelvin is a really cool white. It's almost blue. And I think this is the colour temperature of things like screens. Like a TV will be colour balanced to 6500 Kelvin. So potentially if you're filming a screen, for example, this might be a good colour temperature to use. Not 100% sure, but I've kind of dealt with that or been in situations before where I've wanted to film a, like a TV or something and I've not been able to get the lights cool enough to match the white coming out of the TV. So it's quite cool you can do that. It goes very cool, which is nice. We'll talk about the colour temperature adjustment in a minute because it's actually really impressive, but a few other features we'll take a look at. So these buttons down the bottom, that puts it into colour configuration or colour temperature mode. EFF is effect mode. So this is the different effects it has. And it's just got a, lot, a few built-in effects that personally I'm probably not really going to use, but it does have them. So we'll quickly flick, flick through them, but I won't demonstrate them in too much detail. So I'll turn the brightness up to kind of make it a bit more visible. And I'll turn my studio lights off just to kind of let you see the light coming out of this when it's doing effects. So this first effect here just cycles through colour temperatures. Don't really know why you'd want that. That one sort of simulates a sort of dim up and down. This one apparently simulates a TV. Probably more useful if you were had a RGB one, but it basically flickers different colour temperatures. Um, the rate button when it's on these effects basically cycles through different rates and basically cycles through how quick the effect operates. So when I'm demonstrating the effect, I'll leave it on rate 5 just so you can see them ha like working quicker. It only really flickers between a couple of different colour temperatures, so it's not super useful. But maybe if you sort of had it, you know, through a window that you're filming from outside, you might be able to get some sort of effect of it from this which is quite good, but I think you'd probably benefit from a bit more RGB. Of course, it's not an RGB light, so you can't expect that. Explosions could probably work. You can then adjust colour temperature of these effects, so you could say that you know you want a warmer explosion, you can turn that down. And that will then be a warmer explosion. So you can do that, you can do that. Of course you can change the rate as well. This one which is like a sort of broken light, so that'll basically flicker on and off periodically. They're a little bit predictable. Um, they kind of repeat quite a lot, but you do have these effects. Um, this is like a sort of arc flash, sort of like arc welding. So I imagine you potentially had a couple of these lights. Say you're filming in like a big, you know, industrial setting. You had a couple of these lights dotted around in the background, lighting up. You know, it could be quite a nice effect. Lightning or thunder and lightning. Do that other one was some arcing. That'll flash SOS and probably freak my neighbours out when I'm flashing out the window. But yeah, that flash SOS. Presumably not to use this if you're stranded and more if you're filming a shipwreck film, I don't know, but SOS. The fire one's quite effective, actually. Um, I, I set this up and basically walked out the room and looked at sort of adjacent into the door where I couldn't see the light. It is quite effective. Not on level five, that's far too flashy. But on a lower level, it's quite an effective little glow. And then back onto that cycle. So that's the effect you have. For the sort of stuff I film, it's not something, something I'm ever going to need because I just, I just don't film with light effects. But it is nice to have that potential if you're doing more sort of cinematic filmmaking type stuff. So yep, that's how that works. Basically, you switch to effect and then the rate button changes how fast that effect operates or you can put it into standard constant light mode, which is what I use. Finally, you've got settings here. So you can go through this. 
BT is for Bluetooth, this just lets you reset the Bluetooth to connect to the phone, we'll take a look at that later. You can change the fan between smart and quiet. I just leave it on smart, which you do hear the fan, but it's not deadly. Um, I use a lav mic so it doesn't pick up too much ambient noise, so I'm not too worried about having the fan. I mean, there's a server in the corner of the room that's louder than the fan from this, so it's fine, but you can change the fan to quiet if you wanted. I'll leave it on smart because I'd rather pro like, prolong the life of it, I'd rather not have it run hot if I can avoid that. Next up, you've got grouping and communication. I've not used this because I've only got one light, but I think you can kind of pair the lights to each other and have them all control in the group, which is quite nice. That same communication there. RP is repeater, I think you can use it to like repeat signals through lights, something like that. Curve seems permanently to be set to linear on mine, so I don't quite know what that does. But what happened with response is this you can either set between sharp and smooth. So if it's set to smooth, and you go back to here and you say change the brightness, it may not come across well on camera, but it's kind of, yeah, you see, I, see, I stopped changing it there. And then it takes a little second to catch up, so the light changes at a smoother rate. Like that. It's hard to see because the camera is also adjusting. But if you put that on, sh and it comes out, it sets smooth out of the box, but I've changed that to sharp. And if you do that, now it reacts instantly. So I think if you were adjusting the, the settings live while filming, you might want to leave that on smooth because it won't be as noticeable. But because I want to just see exactly what I'm setting it to, as soon as I change it, I've changed that to sharp. So leave that on sharp, and then you've got language, and then just product info stuff. So yeah, that's a sort of look through settings there. Of course, I can't really look at all the grouping type stuff, but it does all have all that. But speaking of the grouping, this brings up one thing that I sort of noticed really only afterwards looking at the product photos. It's kind of neat and it explains this slightly weird form factor. So with this light you'll notice it looks a bit... it's got just these extra bits on the side with ball bearings and I remember seeing that thinking surely that's not decorative because you know that costs money to put ball bearings and stuff in. But what this is actually designed to do is to allow you to link multiple of these lights together. So you can actually slot additional lights onto the top and on the side and almost make a sort of grid of these lights in one single piece and then you can obviously fit a single light stand attachment onto that and stand up as a single massive light and I suppose that's probably what you'd want to use the grouping for as well. Now if you did that you obviously wouldn't be using a softbox with it because well you couldn't <laughs> fit a softbox onto that many lights but if you're using this with say external reflectors or external diffusion panels you could actually do that you, you could connect multiple lights together and have one massive light and then use your separate light modifying stuff to modify the light. It's an interesting idea. I suppose it could be useful in the sense that if you don't quite know where you want the lights, you could just buy a few of these, clip them together where you need a lot of light, and then have an individual one separately. You could, it's, just, it's, it's a neat idea. So yeah, basically if you're wondering what these little weird runners for and ball bearings are, it basically lets you like connect the lights onto each other and have one big assembly with like six plus lights attached together. It's kind of neat. Of course they don't power each other from each other, so you still need to have like a separate power adapter into each one. It would be nice if you could easily chain the power, but of course that's a bit tricky when you're dealing with like a USB power adapter. You wouldn't be able to get a USB power adapter to power enough of these, but yeah, it's kind of nice that they can all connect together. But yeah, that explains that. Now the next thing I want to take a look at is the colour temperature adjustment, because this thing's really surprised me. Anytime previously when I've used a configurable colour temperature light source, I found that it's only at its brightest on its middle colour temperature setting and as you turn it cooler or warmer the brightness dims slightly because you're only running some of the LEDs because you know, they've got a mix of warm white and cool white LEDs. So I wanted to see how this worked and what I did is basically set it to the lowest brightness, put a load of settings on the camera to basically dim the image down as much as possible and film straight into the cob. And it works in much the same way. It's got a mix of warm white and cool white LEDs on the cob and as you change the colour temperature, it just mixes between them. So it starts off with the, just the warm white on. As you bring in the cool white LEDs, it starts to get cooler. And then if, as it gets to sort of starts getting towards the cooler end, cooler end of everything, it starts to dim out the warm white LEDs. So that's basically the same as any other configurable colour temperature light, light source I've used before. However, when I was playing about with this, I noticed that as I changed the colour temperature, the overall brightness didn't really change much. And I found, thought that's actually kind of interesting, so I plugged it into a power meter and just measured the power that this draws from the wall. And as you change the colour temperature, the amount of power that it draws is basically the same, it doesn't really change much. So I thought, that's kind of interesting. So I've set up this test here. 
Now, this isn't a scientific test at all. I'm using my phone's built-in light meter. And of course, the light's just kind of preca precariously balanced on a tape measure, so it's not exactly scientific. So don't take the figures or readings from this as being an actual accurate figure. Just treat it as like a relative comparison. What we've got is we've got my phone measuring the light output here in Lux, and we've got the light here set to 4000 Kelvin at 100% brightness. And as you can see, with it set to 100% brightness, we're getting a reading of about 11,800 Lux. And you'll notice on this, if I then increase the colour temperature, make it cooler, it barely changes. It's now 11,750 Lux. So I think we maybe lost 100 Lux, but when you're talking 11,000 Lux, that's not a huge percentage difference. And then likewise, if we drop this down to all the way to 2700 Kelvin, so at the warmest setting, again, you're looking at basically 11,800 Lux. So this light doesn't really change brightness as you change colour temperature, which is really good. Now, as a rough comparison, if we turn this off, and what I'll do is I'll bring in one of my LED panels. So I'll turn one of the LED panels off, just so we're only using one of them. Bring it round to here. Obviously, it's a much lower, lower number, but that's just because it's not as bright a light source, or as pointed a light source, it's much more diffused. But you can see this is the LED panel set to 4,700 Kelvin. And you can see that brightness is currently 1,500-ish. Now, if I turn that up to the coolest, that's now dropped to just over a thousand. And if we bring it back down to the warmest, again, it's only about 1,100, 1,100. And then again, you bring it to the middle, and that's now 1,600. So you can see there's like a huge fluctuation on this. It's, it's almost losing about a third of its power when you move it away from the middle colour temperature. And that's something that's always bugged me with these, because I like to match the colour temperature that's in the room. And in this room, the light bulbs are around about, I think, 4,700 Kelvin. But these lights are at their brightest, around about 4,500 Kelvin. So actually, to film in this room, I'm not able to run my LED panels at the maximum brightness they act, or maximum light output that they can do because they have to be slightly cooler than that middle point. So with this light actually just being consistent across its range, it's really, really good. It means that if you want to film in, a, say, a daylight environment, this will still be at its absolute peak brightness, even when it's set to a daylight colour temperature. Whereas with my LED panels, if I need to film in a daylight environment, I lose like a third of the brightness output. So that's actually really good. It's kind of interesting how they're doing it. I suppose they're probably just regulating the power to the LED and they're kind of just limiting it. But that's really, really good. And that's something that really surprised me with this, that the, L the, the overall brightness output is consistent no matter what colour temperature you've got set. So that's really, really good. I'm very impressed with that. So yeah, that's how the colour temperature adjustment works. And while I've got my phone out, we'll take a look at the app. So this is the app here, and it's called Callbar Studio. And it seems okay, it's pretty basic, and it's not, it feels, doesn't feel super refined, but it seems okay. The main thing I've noticed with this that's a very good sign is that it doesn't require any sort of account or registration, which is a massive bugbear I had with my current LED panels, where just to use the app, you need to set up an account, which is totally ridiculous for a local device. But with this, you don't. You can just install it, connect to the light over Bluetooth, and it just works. So that's a really good sign. It means that you're not relying on any servers operated by Callbar to keep the app operating. The app will just operate, you know, as long, for as long as you can have that app installed on your phone, you've got the app working, so that's really good. So with the app open, you can see we have some scenes here. I think you can add multiple lights to create different scenes and group them, but if you go into that, that's this light. And then here we can change some of the settings. So you can change between white, gel, and for like color correction, for like color, if you're putting like gel filters in front, um, and effects. It's a little bit weird and it does occasionally glitch out on you. Um, if you turn that on there, that should pull this up and then we should be able to use this to adjust the brightness. So that's the overall brightness of it. That's turned up full brightness. That's turned it down. We can change the color temperature in here as well. That's much warmer. That's very warm. That's very cool. So the color temperature adjustment does work. Not sure what the gel thing does. I suspect it's if you've got like gel filters, it's not something that I've really got here. And you can also control the effects from this, so as you can see, that then brings in this rate control. And you can pick one of these effects, like the bonfire effect, that's now flickering away. You can change the rate in that, so it gives you basically the same control the device has. 
there's nothing really on this that you can't do on the light itself so you don't really need the app which is quite good it's probably useful if you maybe got a lot of lights in a room and you don't want to run around them all you want to just control them from your phone and for that it's probably okay but it's nothing special it's only the local control over bluetooth it doesn't seem to have any sort of like internet control type stuff and it's a little bit fiddly in places I found occasionally if you press the button too many times it pops up to that saying click too often please wait and it'll wait until you so you have to kind of wait and let it catch up with you so it does have the app it's nothing special but it does work so yeah that's the app there it works but it's not that special i think for me realistically i'm just always going to use the controls on the light i'm not going to use the app but that's the same with my current led panels they've got a very comprehensive app and i have never used it outside of making the original review so yeah I'll stick to local controls, but it does have the app if you need it. So there you go. That was a tour of the features, the interface, the app, all that sort of stuff. So what I'll now do is we'll take a look at how I've been using it. So yep, as, as I showed you, you know, I've got the app here, the light here, and it does just work as a point light source, but I couldn't really film a video with this, obviously. It's far too harsh. These sorts of lights are designed to really be used with external manipulation. Now, you do get the included reflector, so you can put that on, and that will reflect, or consolidate all the light into a sort of much more narrow beam so we can put that on there and it does this now you'll find with this it gives an extremely bright point in the middle of the light a really big hot spot you definitely wouldn't want to use this as a normal light source on its own this is something you'd probably want to use if you had an external reflector or diffuser and you kind of wanted to get more of the light to hit that you could use this to consolidate to a tighter beam and then have this with an external you know light manipulation device I'm personally not going to use this just because external like diffusers and stuff is just going to get in the way so I'm just going to use a softbox but it does come with a reflector but yeah you couldn't just use it as like a sort of single bright light with this hot spot in the middle it's really designed to, to hit off an external reflector or diffuser or something like that but what we'll now do is we're going to take a look at the softbox I'm using before I do that I'll quickly demonstrate the Bowens mount just because it's much easier to do with this small reflector than trying to show a softbox on camera but basically all it is is this little sort of slot here so you push this little switch down there and that will then rotate off and then if you put it on and then rotate it around it clicks into place so that will click in securely and then that allows you to release it so that's how that works and if you're using a bounce mount softbox like i'm using it works in the exact same way you just have a softbox instead of this and it just clips on exactly the same so this is really good it makes it so easy to take the, the sort of whole assembly apart and put it together it's really nice it's a really nice quick release connector which is nice Plus being standardised, it means you can buy soft boxes and stuff from other other manufacturers. You don't have to buy anything specific to this. Any bound mount soft box will fit onto that. And that means you can use anything from a cheap little Amazon special all the way up to some absolutely ridiculous expensive soft box with this light. So that's really good. Another thing that I quite like about this, it's definitely quite well thought out, is this, is this adjustment here for the tilting. So obviously you can loosen this off here and then that will tilt and then you tighten it up. You know, it just makes sense. It's what you'd expect. But they have thought about this, because what you'd find with this is just because of the length of this arm, it's going to hit off a sort of bounds mount ring you've got installed or any softbox you'd have installed. This could potentially hit off that, and then that could get in the way of you tightening it. But it's actually one of these ones, I've seen these on um, monitor arms before, where obviously when you normally turn it, that's actually a tightening and that's actually a loosening. But what you can also do is if you pull this out, it disengages it. So if I pull that out, it then free spins. So that's now not turning the actual screw thread. That's just turning the repositioning the handle. So like right now, that's fully tight. Obviously, if I were to then, I want to loosen this off, but I can't because it's kind of if it go if I try and loosen it off, that's just going to hit that, and then it won't really be loose. It just stays in position. But what I can do is I can pull this away, turn it back. That's now free turned back, and then it will now loosen off. So that's just a really neat little additional features that yeah you can this will you know, normally loosen and tighten that but if you pull it away from the body this will then sort of free spin to let you reposition this arm to you know to stop it hitting off your softbox so that's quite well thought out I like that so there we go that's the softbox installed now as you can see it's a bit unwieldy to show on camera but that's it there and yep it just fits onto the bounds mount like that so it fits on there very neatly clips on and it's perfectly secure and I actually found that having this on a light stand is actually more stable than one of my LED panels because even though this softbox does protrude very far forward and the mounting point on the, LED, on the light stands here, all the weight is in this light. So actually it's pretty stable, which is good because I was a bit worried having this hanging off, but no, it seems pretty good. 
So yeah, that's it there. And if you look around the front, you can see there's the diffusion layer there. There's multiple layers of diffusion you can put into these soft boxes. I've only got one. I've not put the internal layer in, and that diffuses it enough. You can put additional layers in, but that might that'll just sort of reduce the light output, but make the light a bit softer. There's also things like the honeycomb grid things you can put on the front if you want to avoid light spill. For the sort of stuff I do, I don't really need that. I just need a simple soft box just to diffuse the light, so this is absolutely fine. Because all I want is just softer light. And then if you turn this on, you'll see it, well, lights up. So that's it there. It's not set to a super bright brightness level right now, but if I turn that up, you'll see it'll get a lot brighter. So yeah, that's the soft box. Of course, I can't really talk much more about a soft box. It produces the light. But what this now produces is a much softer light. So you might not be able to see it too well on camera, especially when I've got studio lights on, but compared to what I had before, the light out of this is a lot softer. That basically just means the shadows will be a lot less harsh and it'll be a much nicer light. So this is something I can very easily film under. And when I filmed that boiler video, I noticed a massive difference filming with this softbox versus my LED panels. It was just so much easier just to get rid of shadows because you just didn't really have as many. So yeah, what we'll now do is we'll go away, I'll set it up and I'll do a couple of demonstration shots to compare this to an LED panel in terms of softness, and then we'll sort of wrap up. Okay, so I've now brought this very rubbish selection of objects into shot, just to sort of demonstrate the different light output. I'm not really talking about the brightness or things like the colour accuracy, the accuracy is absolutely fine. This is more of a comparison between the shadows from using an LED panel to a softbox with a, cob with a cob light in it, and really just sort of show how much softer the light is. So currently we're just using the LED panel, just got one panel on, and as you can see, all these items have quite harsh shadows around them. So like round the back here, it's quite harsh shadow. Same with the pen, there's big shadows there. And the recorder, the shadows stick out quite a bit. And this is what I've always filmed with before. Now, of course, I've normally filmed with two lights. So if we bring the other light on, this is what you get. And this is better in the sense that the light on the other side then fills in some of these shadows. But then what it does is cast shadows on the other side. And while it means the shadows are less noticeable than when you've only got one light, or they're less harsh individually, you end up with shadows on both sides of the object, so actually it can kind of be worse. It just, you get these harsh shadows. And this is just something you're always going to get with LED panels. Because they're just a very hard light source, you're just always going to get these sort of harsh shadows. And these LED panels actually have a sort of diffusion layer. If I take the diffusion layer out of one of the, one of the light panels, you can see the shadows are actually going to get even worse. So you can see that's without the diffusion panel. If you stick the diffusion panel in, it maybe makes it a little bit softer. But the thing is, with, a, with an LED panel, you're just not going to be able to get the diffusion layer far enough from the lights or the light source to actually make a really big difference. So yeah, this is what you're going to get out of an LED panel. It's going to be quite a harsh light, or hard light, and you're going to have quite harsh shadows, even if you have two lights. So what we'll now do is we'll go back to a single LED panel, and then we'll take that out and put the softbox in its place and see what this does to the shadows. And there you go, that's us now back with a softbox. And even though of course you're still going to get shadows, you'll notice they're a lot softer. If we flip between the two, you'll see that with the LED panel, the edges on the shadows are quite defined. We're using the softbox with the cob light, it does just soften those shadows quite a bit, which is really good. And then what you can do, is that even though I only have one of these softboxes right now, what I found when I was filming the boiler video, is if I then brought on an LED panel, you can obviously see the shadows have come back quite harsh here, but I can then just turn this down to a much lower level. And all I'm now doing here is I have this LED panel off to the side, and it's just filling in these shadows a little bit. So while it does cast a slight shadow here, and that's also quite a hard shadow because it's a LED panel, it just fills in the shadows from the softbox a little bit. So we can do that. if we turn that off, you can see the difference. So using the LED panel, it turned on to high brightness there. I forgot all the settings, that was fantastic. Um, yeah, so if the LED panel's off, you do get the shadow here from the softbox. If you bring the LED panel in on its lowest brightness setting, you can see it just fills in these shadows a little bit. And while it does cast a little extra shadow here, it's not too bad. This is one of the annoyances with these LED panels is they only go up in 10% increments, so I can't really set it to any dimmer than it is currently. If I move it further away, that'll maybe help a little bit. So you can see there, I can use this just to fill in the shadows a little bit here without causing too much of a shadow here. So, as you can see with this, if we compare this now to where we've had two LED panels, you can see the shadows are a lot more controlled and are a lot less noticeable. So it makes a huge difference. 
And especially if I'm, say, handling an object and holding it in front of the camera, it is just a much nicer light doing this with a softbox than it is to do it with an LED panel. So yeah, this is sort of overall light output, and I'm really happy with it. It's very bright, and the softness makes such a difference. Now, of course, this left me with a bit of a dilemma going forwards, because I've only got one softbox and one cob light, and then I've got two LED panels. So I think for a while I'll be doing what I'm doing right now, where I've got the softbox as the main light, and it's super bright, so it's plenty bright enough to light up basically on everything on its own. And then I'll use the LED panel at a very low level off to the side, just to kind of fill in the shadows. And that kind of gives a fairly good sort of overall light. Eventually, I think I probably want to go and have two, to go and get a setup with two softboxes. So either I would need to get another cob light and another softbox like this here, or I might look into those LED panel softboxes. Because what's put me off them previously is that they aren't really bright enough. They, they take away, a softbox removes quite a lot of the light output. So my fear with using that with the LED panel, which themselves aren't super bright, it would just take out too much of the light. But I'm thinking potentially if I got LED panel softboxes for the LED panels, had this softbox here, and had most of the light coming from the main cob light, the colbor light, and instead just had the LED panel with a softbox on it, just filling in the shadows a little bit with even softer light than it's doing right now, that could work quite well. So yeah, that's an overall comparison of the light output, comparing between two LED, one LED panel to two LED panels to the softbox on its own. Show the different options right now. But yeah, this is actually really, really good. So yeah, using this with a softbox is such a nice soft light. So yeah, I'm very happy with the light output and I can't wait to use this in future videos. So there you go. That was a look at the Colbor CL60 Cobb Video Light. And I'm very happy with it. This is the first time I've ever used a cob light like this. All I've used before really is LED panels and then CFL softboxes. And this is kind of like the best of both of those. It's got the convenience and cool running and reliability and quality of light that LED has. However, just being able to use it with a softbox provides much nicer soft light compared to the LED panels that I've always just found to be a little bit too harsh. So yeah, I'm really happy with this. I think my only complaint is I've only got one of them, so actually I kind of feel like I'm missing out not having two. So I'll probably end up get, getting a second Cobb video light just to have two of them, but I suppose it's a good sign when your only real complaint is that you kind of want another one. Um, so yeah, really, really happy with this. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in buying this, there'll be links in the description. I stand by for a lot more videos coming up, and those videos will probably be filmed with this, so you'll be able to see a lot more examples of the light that this produces. So yeah, thank you very much for watching.